On September 24th, 2018, Super Mario Bros. history was made. I cannot believe it! The game was beaten in 4 minutes and 55.913 seconds in what might be the final second break ever. Let's see how the run was achieved, how it could be beaten, and if the legendary 454 is possible. I'm just really good at it. Back in February, Darbian had the world record at 456.528 when Cosmic beat it with a 456.462. Third place runner Sumwest attempted to beat that record, and on May 11th, set a new personal best of 456.495, two frames behind Cosmic. Yes! My goodness, a PB. How long's it been? He kept playing, and two weeks later, on May 25th, Sumwest set a new world record with a time of 456.245. At that point, Sumwest had one goal in mind, to be the first person to get a 455. He tried and tried for four months, but there was one problem. 455 is hard. It's really, really hard. Here's what happened during those four months. Sumwest recorded a total of 6,022 attempts. 2,141 of them got past 1-1. 795 attempts got past 1-2, but only 442 of them were fast enough to get into World 4 on 455 pace. This means World 1 alone is so hard to do fast enough that he had a 7.3% success rate. Of those 442 runs into World 4, 271 of them made it to 4-2, and only 81 of them into World 8. In other words, for every 75 attempts, one single run would reach World 8 on 455 pace. 43 runs made it past 8-1, 12 runs made it past 8-2, and only 2 runs made it to the final level. Both of those attempts ended at the same place, on this pixel-perfect, frame-perfect wall jump. The first one missed the pixel, and the second one hit the right pixel, but some West did not time his jump correctly. And that's how, over 6,000 attempts later, 455 still eluded him. Meanwhile, Cosmic had been playing as well, but he was only playing to beat some West's record, not for 455. He had a few close calls too, but had been unsuccessful thus far. This brings us to the night of September 24th. After about an hour of attempts, Cosmic managed to tie Sumwest's world record with a 456.245 of his own. I don't know. I don't know how fast it is. I hope that turnaround doesn't kill me. After celebrating his newly acquired tied record, he decided to do a few attempts at 455 just for fun, with no expectation to even make it to World 8 once. And that's when this happened. This time, we're only going to look at the most significant points in the run, but the full unedited speedrun is available here. I'm also not going to explain most of the tricks used in the run in full detail, as they have already been thoroughly explained in my previous video. If you have never seen a Super Mario Bros. speedrun before, you should watch that video first, because even though it covers Cosmic's 456.462 from February, all the information is still relevant for 455. Here's a quick rundown of the main things you need to know. First, the game runs at 60 frames per second, so one frame is 1 60th of a second. The game will only load the next level every 21 frames, or 0.35 seconds. That amount of time is called a frame rule. For the first 7 levels, the goal is to always stay on the fastest frame rule, as losing one frame rule means losing 0.35 seconds. On the last level, Every frame counts because timing stops when touching the axe, which isn't influenced by frame rules. It is possible to clip into walls, but it requires a position even more precise than one pixel. Units of distance smaller than a pixel are called subpixels. These clips allow for tricks like the flagpole glitch, bullet big glitch, and also save time in 1-2 and 4-2. 
They are all extremely difficult to perform and usually require multiple frame perfect button presses to work. Sometimes you can trick the game into sending you to a different room than intended by scrolling the screen past a certain point. This is used in 4-2 and 8-4. You can also perform a wall jump by hitting the wall exactly between two blocks and jumping on the same frame. Finally, Mario accelerates faster in the direction opposite of which he's facing, so facing backwards is faster when accelerating from a stop. That should cover the most important things. For all the details, my previous video got you covered. That's a good start. So, Cosmic managed to get the 1-1 flagpole glitch. He then pulled off the newest addition to Super Mario Bros. speedruns, the 1-2 pipe clip. Let's go. I hope it's fast. This trick was the final piece of the 455 puzzle. To get this, you first need to beat 1-2 without slowing down at all, which is already pretty hard. This is crucial because any deviation from the optimal strategy will change Mario's subpixel position, which in turn can make the clip harder or impossible. Then, you need to land right here, release B to slow down to walking speed, and do a one frame jump. To finish up, you need to go far enough to the right to load the warp zone correctly and go to world 4. If you don't, you will end up in world 36 or minus world. This jump to the pipe is particularly important. Because Mario accelerates faster backwards, Cosmic wants to be facing to the right while holding left. By jumping on the same frame he lands, Mario doesn't have time to turn around and so he keeps facing to the right. This extra acceleration speed is more often than not the final little push runners need to make it to the pipe in time to save the frame rule. There are two main reasons why this trick is the single hardest in the entire run. First, because you need to tap A for 1 60th of a second. Second, because you need to do the entire thing within a handful of frames from perfection. On top of that, because of the detour to load the warp zone, this trick only saves one frame rule at best. This is why runners never included it until it was the last possible way to save any time. Free. Here, Cosmic pulls off the flagpole glitch again and enters 4-2. This is the 455. Tell your friends. He did the same wall clip as usual, but this time it was a bit slow. But thanks to really precise movement in the rest of the level, he still managed to save the frame rule and stay on 455 pace entering world 8. He got the good judges in 8-1, so he only had to hit the star block to avoid losing time. At this point, he was already excited about the prospect of getting a 455. Am I about to go down as the most clutch gamer alive? But then, he got the bullet bit glitch at the end of 8-2. This is insane. <laughs> this time, he avoided the lag frame you can get while getting bullet bit glitch. At this point, the run was getting really serious, because bullet bit glitch is a major trick where a lot of attempts fail. It's too slow! In my previous video, I explained that one of the major possible time saves was in 8-3. Because the setup for flagpole glitch is harder in 8-3 than it is in 1-1 and 4-1, he decided to skip that trick back then. However, to get 455, he had to do it. Thankfully, Happy Lee discovered an easier way to do the 8-3 flagpole glitch setup than the one I talked about last time. Instead of starting the level by walking and pressing B on a specific frame, you can start by holding right, A and B at the same time. This makes Mario jump at the beginning of the stage and slows him down just enough to get 242 on the timer and avoid fireworks that would cost time. Once that's done, you also need to release right while you're in midair for 1 to 3 frames at some point during the stage. How long you're released right affects how you will need to perform flagpole glitch. If you released it for one frame, you will need to land on the first pixel of this block while not holding B. On the same frame that you land, start holding B. Exactly two frames later, jump. This lines you up perfectly to clip inside of the flagpole base. Now, if you released right for three frames, you need to do this instead. Land on the second pixel of the block instead of the first. 
after you start holding B, jump only one frame later, not two. Luckily, if you released right for two frames, you can do either of those setups and it will work. This means that runners have to be aware of how long they released right and adjust their play accordingly. In this run, Cosmic released right for two frames, which means that he could do either one of the two setups and still get flagpole glitch. At this point, Cosmic was shocked. There's no way this is happening right now. Based on some Wes's attempt count, the likelihood of reaching 8-4 on 455 pace after a successful 1-2 pipe clip is in the ballpark of 1 in 400, and Cosmic had just managed to do it on the very first try, but he still had a few tricks in 8-4 ahead of him. In the second room, he lost 3 frames on the wall jump. The reason can't be pinpointed to anything specifically, but his pipe entry could have been faster. In this room, he tried a different strategy. Instead of stopping on the exact pixel where the game changes the pipe's destination to the water room, he decided to scroll the screen 6 pixels further. This allows him to accelerate enough to reach running speed and enter the pipe faster. This strategy doesn't save any time in most cases, but it is a lot safer. If you stop a bit earlier than intended, you will simply not be able to reach running speed and lose a couple of frames instead of ruining the entire run by going into the wrong room. It is also pretty lenient, as you can go way farther and only lose a few frames. The main risk with this strategy is to jump to the pipe too late and bump into it. Cosmic was scared of doing just that, so he jumped early, which did not let him reach the running speed he wanted and cost him 7 frames. Fortunately though, he knew it was fast enough to get 455 anyway. Whatever, it's slow. Get 455. Please finish. I cannot believe it! What? How? That was my first run ever! Cosmic was lucky enough to get a pattern where Bowser jumps forwards, which makes it trivial to go past him. And just like that, he had beaten the game in 4 minutes and 55.913 seconds. Cosmic Speedrun is perhaps the biggest speedrunning accomplishment of the year. The previous world record holder, Samwes, clocked in 6,000 attempts at it since getting the world record 4 months back. A time like this could have taken Cosmic 20,000 tries, yet he got in on his 9th attempt and the first attempt to successfully clip into the pipe in 1-2. However, as amazing as 455 is, Cosmic Speedrun is still not perfect. It could be beaten by performing 8-4 better. And that's exactly what Sumwes did. Alright, let's do it. Gotta get that fast Excel. And by the way, I have no idea why I went under that hammer. I've never done that in a run or practice, I don't think, on this frame rule. Is it record? As I was editing this video, Sumwes took back the world record with a 455.796 after a mere 132 additional attempts, including a new personal best along the way. But even though he saved 7 frames over Cosmic, Sumwes did not play 8-4 perfectly either. Compared to a perfect 8-4 with no fast accelerations, he lost 3 frames in the wall jump room. 3 frames in the turnaround room, although he gained 4 frames back with a fast acceleration, and 2 frames in the water room for a total of 4 frames. 
But if we take the fastest 8-4 that has ever been done in practice, which is a time recently set by GTAs, that would put his time at 455.563. GTAs used the fast acceleration in three different rooms, which enable him to save 10 frames over a perfect 8-4 without fast acceleration. Unfortunately, it is very unlikely that someone would ever pull off this fast acceleration perfectly in a full game run for one simple reason. When practicing, runners use a save state to allow them to restart the level at will. This lets them have a very quick way to retry this fast acceleration and also to use the save state to their advantage. Fast acceleration requires very quick inputs immediately when gaining control of Mario. In a typical setting, this comes after this long black screen with little time to react and time your button presses correctly. However, using a save state, you can make the inputs a lot easier to time, and combined with the ability to do dozens of tries in a short period of time, makes this fast acceleration orders of magnitude easier in practice than it is in a real run. This fast acceleration can save up to 5 frames, but someone attempting it in a real run would most likely save a couple of frames at best. As a result, the actual human limit is estimated at somewhere between 455.613 and 455.646. There is one more thing that could be done to lower the record even further. On March 4, 2018, Stuck in the Plate managed to complete 8-1 one frame rule faster than is currently done in speedruns. He did it by doing a fast acceleration at the start of the level and performing flagbow glitch. If you remember my previous video, Flagpole glitch only saves 15 frames. This is true with the regular setup that involves releasing B and jumping from the stairs. However, there is a way to do it faster. If you keep holding B and right for the whole duration of the setup, you can actually save 19 frames with the trick. Of course, there is a catch. The way to do it and save 19 frames is significantly harder than the regular flagpole glitch. The easiest method that has been found so far requires you to release right for exactly two frames at a specific point in the level. The timing to do that release is just above one tenth of a second, but releasing right for exactly one thirtieth of a second is very difficult. If you did that correctly, you can perform flagpole glitch by jumping on this exact frame and hold A for exactly three frames. From there, you will clip inside the block. Sometimes, you can't jump one frame late and still get flagpole glitch. In this case though, you can't afford to do that because it would make you miss the frame rule. As a result, the final jump into the flagpole is also frame perfect. Now, frame rules are 21 frames and again, like I mentioned in my previous video, you normally finish this level with zero frames to spare. This means that there are two more frames that need to be saved in order to save a frame rule. This comes from doing a fast acceleration at the beginning of the stage. On flat ground, doing a fast acceleration will save two frames, but in order to save that time, it needs to be absolutely frame perfect. On the exact moment you can control Mario, you need to do this. Hold B and left for one frame. Hold B and nothing else for one frame. Hold B, right and A for one frame, and then hold B and right on the next frame. This means that you need to be able to frame perfectly switch from left to right on the D-pad with exactly one frame of no input in between. And you also need to tap A frame perfectly and to tap it for exactly one frame. Stuck in the Plate was using a ROM hack of the game that allowed him to have extra information about the game's hidden values, specifically Mario's subpixel position. This extra information doesn't affect the game itself, but allowed him to have a better idea of how well he was doing, and let him know in advance if he had a shot at saving the frame rule. Obviously, using a ROM hack for a speedrun is against the rules, so it is only used for practicing. A real speedrun would use the original cartridge, which means that this information would not be available to the runner. Succeeding or failing this trick would almost seem like random chance because you would have no feedback on what exactly went wrong. Again, just like the best 8-4 ever done in practice, this can be performed by quickly recording dozens of tries and timing the inputs correctly. This trick has yet to be performed under normal circumstances, which is coming in from 4-2 with the regular 3 second wait and no cue to time the fast acceleration correctly. This is why it is currently considered not to be possible, or at the very least, not with a success rate better than 1 in a thousand. 
If this trick was somehow implemented in the speedrun, it would save 0.35 seconds, and the best possible time would go down to 455.214. So, is this the end for Super Mario Bros? Is 455 the ultimate speedrun? Is 454 really impossible? Well, the truth is, 454 is actually possible. Using an emulator with slowdown, save states, memory watch, and plenty of other tools, it is possible to create a sequence of button presses to beat the game faster than what humans can do with their hands in a controller. This is called Tool Assisted Speedrunning, or TAS for short and it is a completely separate discipline from regular speedruns. Tool-assisted speedrunners deconstruct the game and try to solve the puzzle of finding the most optimal way to beat it. And the best solution ever found is by a man named Happy Lee, with a time of 4 minutes and 54.032 seconds. Nobody knows for sure if it is the perfect speedrun, but in the past 9 years, only one frame of time save was found, and that was in 2010, so this is the closest we can hope for. So where does this time difference between the tool-assisted speedrun and the real-time world record come from? We're gonna look at it level by level, but first, there is one detail about Happy Lee's task that needs to be cleared up. At certain points, it uses both left and right at the same time to accelerate faster. As far as the console is concerned, those are valid inputs and they can be processed, so it is fair game for a tool-assisted speedrun. However, it's impossible to actually press both left and right at once without breaking the D-pad, modifying the controller, or using a third-party controller. For this reason, pressing left and right at the same time is banned from real-time speedruns as it is considered a form of hardware manipulation. To address this issue, Happy Lee made a separate task that follows the real-time rules for controller inputs, and never presses both left and right at once. This task enters 8-4 on the same frame rule as the regular task, but loses some time in 8-4 itself. It completes the game in 454.282. This is what we're going to compare against, because comparing against the 454.032 would be unfair. In 1-1, the tasks in the real-time run end the level on the same frame rule, so they are tied. Cosmic and Sunwest barely make it in time, and the task has plenty of time to spare. In fact, if anyone found a way to save just one more frame in this level, it would cut 0.35 seconds off the task it uses left and right at the same time. That would bring its time down to 453.68. In 1-2, the tasks in the real-time run are also tied, thanks to the pipe clip that made 455 possible. There is no more time to save on this level, unless something major is found. In 4-1, it's the same thing again. The task can save a handful of frames over Cosmic and Sunwest, but it's not enough to make the next frame rule. 4-2, however, is not so simple. Here, the task does complete the level fast enough to save one frame rule over the current strategy. In fact, 4-2 is another level where the task that uses left and right at the same time is one frame away from saving another frame rule. The task method is not possible to perform in real time for many reasons, but it boils down to the fact that there are too many button presses happening too fast. For example, when clipping into this wall, and when turning around in the warp zone, the task uses many one-frame button presses in a way that a human simply can't replicate. On September 24th, earlier on the same day that Cosmic got the first 455, Happily posted a video showing a theoretically humanly possible method of finishing 4-2 fast enough to save the frame rule and tie the task in that level. As of right now, this has yet to be executed in real time. Some runners have given it a try, but ultimately it's just too hard. One of the main issues is the entire combination of inputs required to clip into the wall, including a frame-perfect one-frame right release, which is just as ridiculously hard as it sounds. The other thing it includes is a way to stop on the pipe faster, but again, the combination of button presses is very hard to pull off. 8-1 does save a frame rule over Cosmic and Sunwest with the flagpole glitch we talked about earlier. This is the least unlikely frame rule to be saved in the future, but that one alone cannot be enough to reach 454. 8-2 is the only other level where the task saves a frame rule over the real-time record. 
The main problem with the 8-2 frame rule is that just like 8-1, there are no frames to spare. Again, the task uses a fast acceleration at the beginning of the stage. After a ridiculous jump on this pipe, the cannon fires the bullet at the last possible time to make this frame rule possible. This also means that the bullet build glitch needs to be executed even more precisely than usual, because it needs to be done on the first possible frame it can be performed on. As a result, 8-2 is considered to be the most unlikely level where humans could match the task. It can be ruled out from the possible ways to get 454. In 8-3, both the tasks and the real-time runs have to wait for the timer to reach 242, so they complete the level at the same time. Reaching the flagpole with 244 on the timer is impossible by one frame, unless you use left plus right. However, flagpole glitch forces you to touch the flagpole 6 frames later than you normally would, which makes 244 on the timer impossible even with left plus right. Getting 244 on the timer and getting 242 with flagpole glitch both finish the level on the same frame rule. In the first room of 8-4, Happy Lee's task manages to perform a fast acceleration that saves 6 frames over Sumwes's 455.796. In the second room, a combination of another fast acceleration and a perfect wall jump allows Happy Lee to cut another 7 frames. In the third room, one fast acceleration, a perfect turnaround, and the second fast acceleration save 13 frames over Sumwes. In the water room, slightly imperfect play costs Sumwes another 2 frames. And in the last room, one final fast acceleration saves the task another 2 frames for a total of 28 frames. 14 of those frames are actual time lost by Sumwes, and the other 14 frames come from the task playing beyond human skill. In conclusion, there are two ways that 454 could be done. The first one is this, flagpole glitch in 1-1, pipe clip in 1-2, flagpole glitch in 4-1, then do the faster 4-2 method that has yet to be performed even once in practice, and also do the flagpole glitch in 8-1 with fast acceleration to save a second frame roll, then do bullet big glitch in 8-2, flagpole glitch in 8-3, and then to play 8-4 better than anyone has ever played in a world record run by 3 frames. That would be enough to get a 454.998. The second one would be similar. Do flagpole glitch in 1-1, pipe clip in 1-2, Flagpole glitch in 4-1, do the current method of doing 4-2 with the wall clip, then do the 8-1 flagpole glitch, do bullet blade glitch in 8-2, flagpole glitch in 8-3, and enter 8-4 only one frame rule ahead of the current record. Then, you would need to play 8-4 an incredible 24 frames faster than anyone has ever done in a world record run, which is 14 frames faster than the best 8-4 ever done even in practice only one frame off the tool-assisted speedrun. Needless to say, the second one is impossible because nobody can play 8-4 with the kind of precision seen in the pass. This means that the only possible way 454 could be done is this one. But considering 8-1 being at best a 1 in a thousand chance, and 4-2 having never been done once even from a safe state, it is very safe to assume that with the way things are right now, 454 is humanly impossible. Here's a summary of the limits of optimization. At 455.913, that's Cosmic's first 455. At 455.796, is world record. Somewhere around 455.6 is the point past which the world record might never be improved. At 455.213 is the sum of the best level times ever performed in any situation by a human, including in practice with a safe state at the start of the level. At 454.798, that's the sum of all the tricks that could theoretically be performed by a human, although 4-2 and 8-4 have never been actually completed this fast. At 454.28, that's the fastest possible time that would respect the rules by not pressing left and right at the same time. And finally, at 454.032 lies the theoretical limit, the fastest possible way that the game could be beaten under any circumstance. Three years ago, 456 was a pipe dream, and 455 wasn't even a dream at all. For now, it looks like 455 might be the final frontier. But the beauty of speedrunning is that we never know what the future holds. 
Maybe someone will find the way to push the limits even further. Maybe, one day, someone will achieve the impossible and reach the legendary 454. No matter how hard or unlikely, if it's possible, it will be done.